Hello everyone, my name is Serafi and I'm happy to meet you all, and today we're going to be playing Red Dragon Archfiend. Red Dragon Archfiend is a deck that I built in real life, and um, the reason why is because I wanted to play some uh, anime type decks, and Red Dragon Archfiend is probably the best one because it is a deck that locks you so hard that you can't play generic extra deck monsters like Typhon or... Um, IP Masquerade or anything like that. You're just literally prevented from doing so from very early in the combo. So, basically you are locked into just Dark Dragon Synchros. Now, this deck has performed much worse than my Ubel deck. Uh, there are a lot of problems with Red Dragon Archfiends and with Resonators in general, which I'll get into as part of this video. But I did want to give a deck profile because I promised that I would. And here we go. For the main deck, we have three copies of Bone Archfiend. Bone Archfiend is a level 4 uh, Dark Fiend monster that can special summon itself from the hand or the graveyard by sending a card you control or from your hand to the graveyard. Um, it allows you to send a card from your deck to the graveyard to change a Fiend Tuner's level by plus 1 or minus 1. A very helpful effect and very good for the game in general. Um, this card is definitely a 3 of. Uh, one of your best non-tuners, period. Next up, we are playing two copies of Synchron Resonator. Synchron Resonator is a level 1 Fiend Tuner. If a Synchro monster is on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. Uh, you can only special summon it once per turn this way. And if this card is sent from your field to the graveyard, you can target one Resonator monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Pretty solid. Our main starter for the deck is Soul Resonator. Soul Resonator is a... Th oh, we're playing two copies of Crimson Resonator. Or Synchron Resonator, by the way. Soul Resonator uh, is a th level 3 Fire Fiend Tuner monster with 500 attack points and 200 defense points. When it is normal summon, you can take a level 4 or lower Fiend monster and add it from your deck to your hand. Um, you're going to get your Bone Arch Fiend in that case. Um, also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except Dark Synchro Monsters. So Soul Resonator basically immediately locks you uh, so that you can't do anything else. Um, if a card you control will be destroyed by a card effect while you control Red Dragon Archfiend or a Synchro Monster that mentions it, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. You can only use each effect once per turn. So it's got protection effect, it's pretty good, and it allows you to instantly get your Bone Archfiend so that you can begin your combo. To facilitate the Soul Resonator, we're playing three copies of Resonator Call. Resonator Call is a spell card that allows you to search your deck for a Resonator monster and add it to your hand. It is not once per turn, and we can play three of it, so excellent. Rounding out our Resonator combo, we have two copies of Vision Resonator. Vision Resonator is a level 2 Dark Tuner monster. It has 400 attack and 400 defense. You could special summon this card from your hand if a level 5 or higher Dark monster is on the field. And when it goes to the graveyard, uh, you can add a Red Dragon Archfiend card, a spell or trap that mentions Red Dragon Archfiend from your deck to your hand, uh, or your graveyard to your hand. No, just from your deck. Uh, really good. Okay. Then for the Red Dragon support cards, we are playing two copies of Crimson Gaia. Crimson Gaia is a continuous spell. Uh, during your main phase, you can add one Red Dragon Archfiend or one card that mentions it from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So this is the card that adds from the graveyard. That's what I was remembering. Um... When your Red Dragon Archfiend declares an attack, you can change all monsters your opponent controls to face down defense position. So it's a Book of Eclipse, but only for your opponent. This is important because Red Dragon Archfiend has the ability to destroy all defense position monsters after attacks. Obviously, it doesn't work on links, but you can just attack into their link and then destroy everything else. Um, if a monster on the field is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, you can special summon one Red Dragon Archfiend from your graveyard. You can only use each effect once per turn. So that's really solid. You know, it can be on your field, on your opponent's field. Popping Red Dragon Archfiend, uh, summoning Red Dragon Archfiend for free is really, really good. Rounding out the Red Dragon Archfiend support cards, we have Red Zone. Red Zone is a searchable trap card. We search this off of Crimson Gaia. Uh, continuous trap. When your opponent activates a card or effect while you control Red Dragon Archfiend or a card, a synchro monster that mentions it, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. Obviously, this doesn't, this doesn't negate cards, but if you activate it in response to the activation of a field spell, for example, you can just destroy the field spell and that will negate it. Um, you can target one of your banished Dark Dragon Seeker monsters and special summon it. You can only use each effect with Red Zone once per turn. We'll talk about how the second effect is good in a bit. Now 
Next up, we have the Bestial cards. So we are playing three copies of the Bestial Lubellion. You could discard this card from your hand to add a Bestial monster from your deck to your hand. You could special summon this card from your hand or your graveyard by tributing a level six or higher dragon monster, I believe, dark dragon monster. And once per turn, you can play a continuous uh, spell or trap that is has bestial or branded in the name uh, from your deck face up. So just a really solid card. It's level eight. You can use it for tuning and other things like that. But primarily you're gonna use this to get your magnum in your hand so that you can start your bestial plays. It's good synergy and uh, Getting Brandon Beast out is also very useful. Um, next up, we have one copy of Bestial Magnumut. Um, uh, you can uh, the other Bestial monsters are all the same. They're level six Dark Dragons. You can special summon them by banishing a light or dark monster from either graveyard. It is a quick effect, but only if your opponent controls a monster. Um, Bestial Magnumut has an additional effect when it's summoned. You can target. Uh, you can at the end of the turn search any dragon monster from your deck. Pretty good. For uh, our other Bestial monsters, we have Bestial Druusworm. Bestial Druusworm's effect is when it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target a special summon monster your opponent controls and send it to the graveyard. Pretty solid. Then we have Bestial Serenir. Bestial Serenir's effect is uh, you can send one, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can send one Bestial monster or one branded spell or trap from your deck to the graveyard. So if uh, Bestial Serenir is sent to the graveyard, then you can just mill a Bestial Lubellion and then special summon it from the graveyard. So this is a nice little option. The other two are better though. You're probably gonna, what you're only gonna do is you're gonna wanna discard the Lubellion to search the Magnumut, Magnumut, uh, special summon itself, and then uh, at the end of the turn, add the Druus Worm. Then you can special summon the Druus Worm and send it to the graveyard during your opponent's turn with your Branded Beast so that you can get some extra copies off, uh, some extra combo off. Branded Beast, by the way, is the card that you'll play with your Lubellion. Um, if you control a bestial monster, you contribute one uh, level six or higher. No, you contribute any dragon monster. Any dragon monster, and then target one card your opponent controls and destroy it, uh, which is pretty solid. Those are the bestial cards. Uh, basically, just a little tiny package that allows you to get some extra interactions. Banishing cards from your opponent's graveyard is really good. Uh, it's not as good as it used to be because we have this fire meta right now, but it's good against you, Bell, and other uh, dark decks, um, you know. So we'll see how powerful Fiendsmith, for example, remains, and whether Bestials will be a good counter to that. Now we'll talk about... Oh, I'm so sorry. How, where did this go? <laughs> I have one copy of Crimson Resonator. I apologize. This disappeared into my deck for some reason. So yes, we are playing one copy of Crimson Resonator. Um, that's part of the combo. We'll talk about the combo in a bit. All right. Now then, uh, let's talk about the generic uh, support cards. Uh, so we have... Three copies of Earthbound Prisoner Stone Sweeper. This card, you can discard it from your hand to add a level three or lower tuner monster from your deck to your hand. It has to be a fiend. So you can use this to search Soul Resonator. So this is nine copies of Soul Resonator with the three Soul Resonators, the three Resonator Calls, and the three uh, Earthbound Stone Sweepers. Next up, we are playing Obsessive Yu-Yu Loop. This is a card that allows you to banish a Synchro Monster from your graveyard to special summon it. And you can also banish a Synchro Monster from your graveyard uh, to... Uh, or you can banish a Synchro Monster you control or in your graveyard to add this card to your hand if it's in your graveyard. So you can mill this card, and then when you mill this card, you can banish the Synchro Monster to add it, and you can banish the Synchro Monster from your graveyard to special summon it. There's a lot of Synchro climbing in this deck, and banishing a Synchro Monster is actually pretty good for us because of Bestial Dispotter, which we'll get into. And Obsessive Yu-Yu Loop is actually really good for getting Bestial Dispotter out because you can use the level 4 tuner along with a Bestial Monster. All right. I believe... Um... Let me not lie. Yes, that's fine. Okay, cool. All right, next up we have um, our Pot of Prosperity. Sadly, this was put to one, so we can't play three copies of it anymore. Uh, but we are playing two copies of Pot of Extravagance to make up for that for right now. I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it in a bit. Pot of Prosperity, uh, banish three or six uh, cards from your extra deck to excavate the top uh, either three or six cards and add one of them to your hand. That's a pretty consistent play. Uh, Pot of Extravagance, on the other hand, must be activated at the start of your main phase one, and it allows you to... Oh, I, by the way, Pot of Prosperity makes it so your opponent takes half damage for the rest of the turn. Yeah. Well, you play this on turn one, so it doesn't matter. Uh, extravagance, uh, you banish three or six cards from your extra deck, but they're at random. 
and then you draw a card for every three cards that you banished, but you can't draw any more cards by card effects for the rest of the turn. Well, so it's a pretty solid option. Uh, might be a bit risky for this deck, so I'll have to play test it. Uh, but for right now, this is my option. We're playing one copy of Foolish Burial. Uh, this is a really good card. You can use this on the Bestial Rebellion. You can use this on Obsessive Yu Yu Loop. You can use this on the um, uh, Vision Resonator. There are a lot of monsters that have a benefit when they go to the graveyard in your deck, and you just want. Oh, you can also mill um, Bone Archfiend and then Special Summon it from the graveyard as well. So, yeah, just a lot of different options. We're playing three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Uh, obviously, you know. Plays from your hand, target one of your opponent's monsters, and they get its effects until the end of the turn. Pretty solid. Three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs. Um, just, you know, to make sure that, uh, for example, you Bell players have a difficult time uh, special summoning from the deck. And lastly, three copies of Droll and Lockbird uh, to stop Fiendsmith. That is 41 cards. So I guess technically I could probably cut one of those pots of extravagance and just play one uh, but you know we'll see how it goes for the extra deck we are playing extra deck is all sorts of messed up right now did not organize the extra deck before the video sorry for the extra deck we are playing three copies of red rising dragon red rising dragon is a level six dark dragon sicker monster when this card is special summon you can special summon a resonator monster for from your graveyard, you do have to target. Um, that is a hard bust per turn. It's pretty good. Um, no, it's not. It's not a hard bust per turn. Okay. So yeah, this is a good card. Uh, you just, you know, special summon your Crimson Resonator, pop off. Uh, the problem is it's a very solid imperm target, so you gotta be careful with that. We're playing one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend at Bane. Uh, this card allows you to tribute a any monster to special summon a hot red dragon archfiend from your graveyard um, because you will make uh, uh, scarred red dragon archfiend pretty often you will often have scarred red dragon archfiend in your graveyard so it's a pretty good target for the bane this is like not the best option but calamity got banned so this is the card i'm putting in place of calamity we are playing two copies of the original the boy, you know him, you love him. Red Dragon Archfiend. Uh, Red Dragon Archfiend, uh, if, during your end phase, if any monster did not declare an attack this turn, destroy it. That includes on turn one. So make sure that you don't end your board with Red Dragon Archfiend on turn one. Um, and then if it attacks, uh, at the end of the damage step, destroy all defense position monsters your opponent controls, which is really good with Crimson Gaia. Uh, we are playing two copies of Scarred Dragon Archfiend which is a level 8 Dark Dragon Synchro Monster. Its name is treated as Red Dragon Archfiend while it is on the field and in the graveyard. Um, if this card is sent to the graveyard, uh, then you can uh, Synchro Summon a Red Dragon Archfiend from your extra deck. And then also, if it was sent to the graveyard as Synchro Material specifically, you can destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. You can only use each effect once per turn. So it's a pretty solid card going second. And then going first, you also get some uh, Synchro Climbing. It's basically... Um, Scar Dragon Archfiend is basically a... A reprint of Chaos Ruler because Chaos Ruler was broken, but Red Dragon Archfiend really needed the extra level eight, so they gave us Red Dragon Archfiend. Fair enough. Um, next up, we are playing two copies of Bestial Dispotter, which requires a tuner and a non-tuner Dragon Monster. So you can use the level four um, UV Loop with the level six Bestial Magnemite to make this. Uh, level 10, uh, 3500 attack, 3500 defense. Uh, you can target one banished light or dark monster and special summon it to your field. So that's why we want to banish cards with obsessive UV loop, because Bestial Despotter just brings them right back. It's really, really good. Uh, when your opponent activates a monster effect as a quick effect, you can target one banished card, shuffle it into the deck, then if you shuffle it into your deck, destroy that monster, or if you shuffle it into your opponent's deck, negate the activated effect. You can only use each effect once per turn of Bestial Despotter. So, um... You banish two monsters, one to revive, one to return UV loop to your hand, the other one to special summon it from your hand, and that way you get to special summon one of them back with uh, Despotter and return the other one to destroy a card. So very, very good synergy between Bestial Magnema, uh, Bestial Despotter and Obsessive UV loop. <clears throat> we are playing one copy of Void Ogre Dragon, level eight dark dragon monster. It requires a dark tuner, so you can make this with the. Um, 
specifically with Vision Resonator or with Crimson Resonator and a level 6. Um, once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell card or a trap card while you have no cards in your hand, as a quick effect, you can negate the activation and destroy it. Uh, this is pretty good for dealing with cards like, for example, Lightning Storm and uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, which do see play. Um, you can't always make Void Ar Ogre Dragon, and arguably Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss is better, uh, but you know, you, you will see some options. Currently I'm playing one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Uh, this is probably incorrect. I'll probably try and make some room by cutting a, like a card or two to put another copy of this in just to make sure that I don't banish it by accident with the uh, Extravagance. Again, the Extravagance is a brand new addition because Pot of Prosperity just got banned. Um, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss requires one tuner plus one non-tuner Dark Dragon Synchro Monster. Uh, as a quick effect, you can target one face-up card your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of the turn. That's a monster spell or trap, it's really good. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one tuner monster in your graveyard and special summon it in defense position. You can only use it to effect once per turn. So just a negate. A negate, very good. We are playing Curry Belt the Blade Dragon. The reason why we are playing Curry Belt the Blade Dragon is because it's level 7, and sometimes you get messed up and you have to summon a level 7. Um, this is a Dark Dragon Synchro Monster. If this card is Synchro Summon, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. If this card on the field is destroyed, you can target one face-up monster on the field, and that monster cannot attack until the end of your opponent's turn. You can only use each effect once per turn. So, I mean, a pop is fine, but mostly it's because if your level modulation doesn't work, like, for example, if your Soul Resonator gets negated, and um, and so you have Soul Resonator, or sorry, if you're not your Soul Resonator, if your uh, Bone Archfiend gets negated. So now you have Soul Resonator and Bone Archfiend, and Soul Resonator is level 3 instead of level 2, well, now you can make Kui Belt at least. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. Uh, this, we're playing this as one of. Um, it's Red Dragon Archfiend, but then it also allows you to destroy cards on the field that have less attack than it. And for each one destroyed, then you get to destroy, deal 500 damage to your opponent. It does hit your own monsters, though. Uh, pretty solid card. And then lastly, we are playing Red Supernova Dragon, uh, which requires... It's a level 12, requires uh, three, non -tuner, three tuners and one non-tuner, and um, allows you to banish itself to banish all cards your opponent controls when your opponent's monster declares an attack or activates a card. Um, and then the reason why this is so good is it is a soft once per turn. So if you play your red zone, you can special summon red supernova dragon back from your uh, banished zone, and then you can do the effect all over again. So banishing your opponent's entire field twice is insane, which is part of the reason why we're not playing red ring, because we can do this from the extra deck. All right, that is the deck. So let's talk about the combos. Okay, so first up, we're going to uh, see what we can do with uh, one and a half card combo of Soul Resonator and just a generic card. So Soul Resonator, and we're gonna say a Droll because Droll doesn't have any grave effects and has no synergy in our graveyard. So, start things off, we summon Soul, uh, declare the effect, add the Bone Archfiend to our hand. Bone Archfiend from hand, discard the, the random card. Declare Bone Archfiend effect, we mill Crimson Resonator. We change Soul Resonator's level to 2. Synchro. Red Rising. Red Rising Effect. We special summon Crimson Resonator from our graveyard. Crimson Resonator Effect. When the only other monster we control is a Dark Dragon Sinker monster, we can special summon up to two Resonator monsters from our hand or our deck. So we're going to special summon the... Vision and Vision. We now have three level two tuners and one level six non-tuner on the board. Synchro. Level 12 Red Supernova Dragon. Declare the effect of the uh, Vision Resonator in our graveyard. 
we add Crimson Gaia. Crimson Gaia effect, we search the red zone. Set red zone and pass. There we go. So now we have uh, a monster that cannot be destroyed by our opponent's card effects. Uh, it has, I believe, 5,500 attack points. Um, no, 6,000. 6,000 attack points can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. We have uh, protection in the... Oh, right, no, we don't have protection in the graveyard because we don't have a synchro monster that... No, that's fine. Um, then uh, we banish all of our opponent's uh, cards once per turn. Then we special summon the uh, red supernova dragon back and do it again. So we have two banishes of the entire board, every card your opponent controls. And... Um, yeah. Then that's with uh, three cards left in hand. So you still have hand traps... You could potentially still build a board. You know, we talk about one card combos because people want to know. But really, like, when you have a one card combo, you have other cards that you're doing. You're not playing bad cards in the deck. So, but like, imagine there's an Imperm here. Maybe there's a Droll in hand. Maybe there's an Ash in hand. You know, you have a lot of interaction with just this board. It's fantastic. All right. But that's not as exciting. So let's take a look at some other combos. So, let's do it again. Normal Summon Soul Resonator. Discard the, uh, well, first we search the um, Bone Arch Fang. Discard the Droll, Special Summon it, Mill the Crimson. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Synchro. Red Rising. Red Rising Effect, Special Summon the uh, Crimson from the Graveyard. Crimson Effect. Now we special summon the Vision, but then the other monster that we're going to special summon is the Synchron. Okay. Now we Synchro Vision and Red Rising into the Scarred Red Dragon Archfiend. Vision effect, we add Crimson Gaia. Crimson Gaia, search red zone. Set. Okay. Now we will synchro the Synchron with the Scarred. That allows us to go into the hot red dragon Archfiend Abyss, so we get our negate. Next, we activate the effect of the Scarred Red Dragon Archfiend in our graveyard to synchro summon Red Dragon Archfiend. We also can now activate Synchron Resonator's effect to return Vision Resonator to our hand. And Vision Resonator can special summon itself from the hand when we control a dark dragon monster that, or a dark monster that's level five or higher. Special summon that. Okay, now um, we're going to synchro the Crimson Resonator and the Red Dragon Archfiend into the Bestial Dispotter. And then, now we have uh, now we have options. So, here's what we're gonna do, chat. So, um, so right now we have uh, these monsters out. Now, obviously, you know, obviously, if you have a bestial card in your hand, this combo becomes much longer because then you can not only uh, special summon a bestial monster for extension, but you get to y use the uh, Bestial Dispotter to revive the bestial, uh, the monster that you banish, and you can keep going. It's really, really long in reality because you have so many bestial cards in your deck. But assuming that you just have these two, these two cards, then this is the end board. But let's talk about what you can do with it. You have a negate, and you also can revive a monster from your graveyard if any card is destroyed. If your opponent tries to destroy a card, well, first you have to revive a card, right? So, um, let's see. Negates. If a card is destroyed, like let's say that your opponent pops, you know, your hot red dragon archfiend, then you can revive your red dragon archfiend. You're going to revive Scarred because, you know, that's the one that has the monster effect. 
Um, if you revive Scarred, you can activate Red Zone, and then Red Zone will allow you to pop a card that your opponent controls. Now, um, if they if you um, if they manage to try and destroy one of your cards, uh, that's after that, then you can banish your Soul Resonator. And by banishing Soul Resonator, not only do you protect your board, but now you have a banished card to activate Mystical Despotera's effect to negate. Um, so this is a lot of interaction by itself. Uh, but of course, you know, you would go into this line specifically if you had a Bestial card. Let's talk about what happens if you do that. Alright, so next up we have a two and a half card combo, which is going to be the Crimson Resonator plus one card in hand for, uh, or sorry, not the Crimson Resonator. Soul Resonator, random card in hand, and then we'll say Lubellion. It's not going to be too much better if you have Lubellion versus like any generic Bestial, but it'll be a little bit better. So, Alright, so start things off. Normal Summon, Soul Resonator, activate the effect. Add the Bone Archfiend. Discard the Droll Knockbird, Special Summon, the Soul Resonator. Uh, so Bone Archfiend effect, mill the Crimson. Synchro. Red Rising. Red Rising effect, revive the Crimson. Crimson effect, special summon the Vision and the Synchron from your deck. Synchro. Scarred. Vision effect, grab Crimson Gaia. Crimson Gaia, search red zone. Okay. Synchro again. <clears throat> Abyss um, and then use uh, Scard's effect, special summon Red Dragon Archfiend, use Vision, uh, Synchron's effect to add Vision, Vision, special summon itself. Synchro, Dispotter. Okay. Next, we activate the Bistia Lubellion's effect in our hand. Discard it to add Magnemite. Magnemite effect, banish the Scarred Dragon Archfiend. Special summon itself, activate the effect, we get to search the end of the turn. Lubellion, tribute, special summon. Lubellion effect, now we can activate Branded Beast directly from our deck. That gives us an additional destruction, which triggers the Crimson Gaia. Dispotter effect. Special summon the Scarred Dragon Archfiend from our uh, from our banished zone. Now we have a Red Dragon Archfiend monster or a monster that mentions it so that we can use the effect of Red Zone to pop a card as well. Then we're going to synchro the Crimson Resonator and the Scarred Red Dragon Archfiend to go into the Hot Bane. Well, it depends here, okay? So, Bane is good if you have another card in your hand that you can summon, because um, then you can just bring back the uh, the Scarred and you'll have additional interruption. If you don't have another card in your hand that you can summon, then instead what you would do is you would bring back the uh, Red Rising Dragon and potentially try and empty your hand to go into the Void Ogre Dragon to get yourself an additional negate. So either you have an additional negate or additional pop. You know, it depends on what you have in your hand. Either you can empty your hand, you play Void Ogre, or you can special summon something and then you special summon Bane, you tribute, whatever you could special summon to get the extra monster out. You know, you got you got a lot of interaction here. So then, let's say that you don't. Let's say that you just make the Void Ogre. Alright, so now what do we got? Uh, we have Lubellion, uh, which is going to, you know, this is going to be in defense, 3,000 defense, uh, which is going to do nothing except it, it enables our Branded Beast. We search for the... Druus Worm, so that we have additional, uh, we can special summon during our opponent's turn, 
and then we can tribute to the Druid Swarm with the Branded Beast to pop a card and then send a special summon card to the graveyard. Now, the problem with Druid Swarm, of course, is that it turns off our Void Over Dragon, but we're going to do that immediately. Like, as soon as the opponent's uh, turn, like, as soon as they play a monster, we're going to banish our Scar Dragon Archfiend to special summon Druid Swarm. Then we'll use Red Zone to revive the Scar Dragon Archfiend so that we have the extra interaction on the board. Now, we have uh, Negate, we have a Pop. We have a, another negate. We have another pop, and then once we've once we've tributed, well, we'll probably uh, so once we've tributed a card to pop a card, we can revive another card. You know, um, there's a lot of different ways that you can interact with your opponent on this wide board. So that's the combo. Now, what are the problems? Well, the problem is, of course, that the first two cards that you play, the Dru the um, Resonator and the Archfiend are very vulnerable to interaction. And a lot of people are playing Effect Veiler, a lot of people are playing Ash Blossom. If you don't have any sort of ways to stop this, then you lose the game. So I'm thinking about potentially putting in a uh, number of crossouts or maybe Called by the Grave. It's, it's a problem that this deck is so vulnerable to interruption. But it's a lot of fun. That's the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My name is Strafi, and I was thrilled to have all of you with me.